And we are back with the fourth segment of the GSMC Basketball Podcast, presented by the GSMC Sports Network. And in this fourth segment, we are going to be talking about the man, the myth, the legend, the 0 for 10 from the field in an elimination game himself, Clay Thompson. Now, forgive me for that usually disrespectful, well, unusually disrespectful introduction, but it's just I cannot help but bring that up because for some reason, every single time on Twitter or every single time on Instagram, you look in the comment section, there's always that one guy that's saying Clay Thompson is went 0 for 10 in an elimination game, and I don't understand why they do that because with all due respect, Clay Thompson, before that elimination game, he was considered to be one of the most clutch basketball players ever one of the most clutch shooters in those kinds of situations ever game six clay third quarter clay close out clay whatever you want to call it clay outside headband clay all these kinds of clays they exist and they all have one thing in common they shoot the lights out and now this one right here is the only clay thompson that's really got um, that's really infamous as opposed to being famous, I guess you could say. Well, depending on how you look at it, because you could be infamous to other fans. Like, I mean, as opposed to, like, let's say, for example, Golden State. Klay Thompson is definitely infamous in Golden State for just ruining their hopes and dreams and making all the threes in, I believe it was game, yeah, and making all the threes in game six. Every single one of them. And so here we have 0 for 11, 0 for 10, Clay Thompson. And, you know, with him being 0 for 10 in that elimination game raises a, a lot of questions. Is Do the Golden State Warriors want to re-sign him on the extension? Do the Golden State Warriors want to give him more money? All of this is stipulating from just one really bad performance in an elimination game in the play-in and... Now we're left with this ultimate question, will Klay Thompson leave the Warriors in free agency? If he played well, we wouldn't, I don't think we will be having this kind of conversation because Klay, I, I honestly, ever since Steph and Klay made it to the finals in that first year, I thought they were going to retire together forever. Like they were going to play on the Warriors for as long as their careers lasted. Same with the Spurs. They were going to play as long as they could and they were going to win as many championships as they could and they wouldn't get separated but here we are in a situation where it seems like they could get separated but I don't really think that's going to happen like call me optimistic call me um a little bit nostalgic whatever you want I don't think that's really going to happen but the idea of I'm looking at this article right now saying that you know there's an insider that believes Clay is going to leave Golden State. The idea of Clay Thompson donning a non-Warriors jersey is still surreal to some, but the man himself is seemingly preparing to move out of the Bay Area. And on the Warriors Plus Minus podcast recently, Marcus Thompson the second, and Anthony Slater reported that all signs point to Thompson departing from the Warriors as a free agent this offseason. I don't know where they got that source i don't know what's you know coming from these from this information but the quote here says his situation remains very unsettled behind the scenes slater said reiterating his reports from may 30th when he said that thompson appears ready to test free agency waters for the first time in his career thompson uh, the second chimed in saying I don't think it's looking good for him coming back. I think he's going to get a bunch of money thrown at him. Then Clay has to decide. So Thompson the second added that the Warriors sharpshooter could attract offers north of thirty million per season from interested suitors such as the Orlando Magic, the Thunder, or the Sixers. He also didn't rule out the possibility of other teams joining the fray when the NBA's free agency period commences in June 29th. So, still have a little bit of time until until then, but, you know, that might be a very, very crazy time for basketball. Now, while the Warriors, who own Thompson's bird rights, could technically outbid other suitors by offering him more money than um, 
than the other person, the chances of that happening are rather slim. Because Team Governor Joe Jacob has reiterated that his franchise intends to shed his mounting luxury tax bill after spending a whopping $384 million in 2023-2024 just to finish 10th in the Western Conference. So, since the 2013-2014 and season, Jake Lacob's ownership group has spent $677 million in luxury tax penalties. Per ESPN's Bobby Marks, the Warriors roster could look drastically different starting with the 2024-2025 season. So, that's what this report has... Um, come out and said and you know it's really just um a very weird situation coming in for clay thompson because again it's like i don't really think these if they would have had a little bit of a better season or if they wouldn't have lost in that elimination game the way that they did maybe they wouldn't even be in this kind of hole so okay well here we have somebody in the comments um awesomer kids i have no idea how to pronounce that but hey alexander i work for the warriors and there has been a ton of talk between front office members about clay thompson between sign and trade talks to re-signing and backup plans if we lose him and i mean i have no idea but i'll, I'll take your word for i'll take your word for it i have no idea whether to i'm not gonna believe that but you know if that's what you if that's what you're saying then who knows maybe I mean, who knows? I've heard names such as Bruce Brown pop up in talks as well. Okay, so then, like, I mean, if that... That's that's very weird to think about, like, replacing Clay Thompson with Bruce Brown. It's very weird to think about, but it's like... It's very weird to think that that could somewhat work. I mean, I don't really... I honestly... No, I don't think so. Because, like, Draymond would... I mean, he's sort of, Bruce Brown seems like the type of player that, you know, that he seems like a kind of Draymond Green type player. He Like, he falls under the category of being, you know, a Josh Hart player and, you know, a Draymond player where it's like one of those guys that does everything. I don't think you'd want to have those two players um, being on the, oh, okay, see, that makes a little bit more sense. Um. I'm not an important person, just a janitor, but I hear things. I mean, hey, anyone can, I mean, that is a little bit more believable, granted. We'll find out. I'm not going to say, I'm not going to say I believe you. I'm not going to say I don't believe you, but I'm also not going to say that those could be, um, you know, incorrect and like those could be, um, those might be false. I genuinely think that Clay is just going to test the waters of free agency, coming in like i because why wouldn't he want to test the free agency and see like what kind of teams where and see what other teams would value him and maybe he could use that to his advantage so i wouldn't really be surprised if i wouldn't really be surprised if that's what he does because like that that's what i would do because if i would want more money coming in from my organization the best way to do that is to see what the other organization's value you as like if they see you as you know more you should be making more money if they see that you should be making a little less money but granted most of the time teams are probably going to offer up more money and that would give the warriors a good chance to match and you know it could work in his favor it could not work in his favor but i i would rather see i would rather like to see clay thompson stay on the warriors as opposed to just leaving and but even though i would test the free agency market the only reason why i would test the free agency market is to see if the warriors could end up giving me more money if i was clay thompson like that's what i would do and i mean if they couldn't then maybe i would go ahead and look into signing for a another team because at the same time if we aren't if the Warriors aren't trying to compete for a championship, then what would be the purpose of staying? And if they aren't a team that has enough pieces to win the championship, if I were to stay, what would be the point in staying? Might as well just go ahead and make more money and, you know, get the money before retirement and play out the rest of the season with a completely different team and who knows maybe he'll join a team i mean like they said that the thunder was a team that's 
well, the, at least according to the article, there were reports that, you know, the Thunder could be a team that's interested. So And they're, they made it to the second round of the playoffs this year while also being the youngest team to make the number one seed. So maybe they just need a veteran with a little bit of playoff experience to be able to push them over the top. Like, you never know. That could totally be a possibility that I could see in the future. And with Klay Thompson leaving the Warriors, it would just feel a bit off. I don't know if that's just me, but I really feel like that would be a bit off. So that's all I have for this um, fourth segment. So now we will go ahead and go into the fifth and the final segment where I will be talking about some blockbuster trade ideas where, um, what's it called? where Bleacher Report, they recently reported a, um, well, they recently listed out five different types of trades that could come in from different NBA teams. And I'm just going to go ahead and read off some of these trades, whether I agree with the trades, whether I don't agree with them, things of that nature. Um, oh, it looks like he agrees with the um, the comment that I just made about Clay joining the Thunder. That could work. I mean, like, it's, it's really like a pretty good possibility, whether and I wouldn't, I wouldn't be opposed to seeing that. That would be pretty cool. But we'll go ahead into the fifth segment and talk about some of these blockbuster trades that could be happening in the NBA this offseason. So be sure to stay tuned right after the short break. I will be right back. 